there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to show you how to blend with your Sharpie markers and just a uh, blending pen. And you can use whatever alcohol blending pen you want. It's the same technique as how we blend with watercolor markers, but um, but it works with this too. So this is kind of exciting. And I'm also gonna show you how to draw this cyclamen so that you can follow along with me. Um, I'm using a quarter sheet of Nina Classic Crest card stock in solar white and I'm going to use a just a oval template just to get myself a little frame I'm using a number 08 uh, micron pen and I'm just going to trace my frame and this will just give us kind of an area to work and we can cut that out easily later to draw our cyclamen it's very easy I'm drawing with a pen so I want to make sure that I uh, I don't have too many extra lines. I'm going to start with um, an oval. That's the opening of the bottom of the flower like that. Then I am going to draw a petal coming up. And you want to make sure the petals are large enough that you can work in them. And I have one coming over to the side with a turned up leaf. I'm going to have one in behind here. And I'm going to have one coming over the edge here. This will give us plenty of room to blend. And then I'm going to um, put a stem in, just kind of like a curved stem, and I'm going to double it up, just like that. I'm going to put in a couple buds with leaves. And again, doubling up that stem so that we have room to color. The little bud is kind of just like a little teardrop shape. We're going to do another one over here. Just like so, and double it up. And I'm just trying to keep my lines as smooth as I can. All right, so now we have our little flower sketched. I'm going to, um, on my tile here, move my tile in a little closer, I'm going to scribble out the colors that I'm going to use. I've got this dark kind of fuchsia color. These were all in the Sharpie Bold set of 24. I picked up at Staples. I don't know. These have been in my drawer for a while, um, and they're pretty new. I haven't used them much. I just wanted to kind of grab something that would be kind of all together. You'd be able to use, you know, be able to find it pretty easily. And I also scribbled out these three greens um, over here as well. So I'm going to show you a few techniques. Um, as you know, if you've ever done any marker work, purples, reds, and pinks, very bright pinks, are very hard to blend. Um, so I'm just going to kind of share with you some techniques. So I've scribbled out that dark pink. What I'm going to do is take that medium pink here. It's kind of like a Pepto-Bismol color. And I'm going to use it to pick up some of this, um, this dark color. I'm really picking up a lot, though. I want to uh, make sure I have plenty on the tip of my marker. And I can kind of see it there on the tip it's darker. I don't know if you can see that on the video monitor or not. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with little circles here at the bottom of my flower. I did not prime my paper. I'll show you the priming technique in a minute. I didn't prime it because um, if you get too much ink, I, I found when I was priming it, I was getting, um, it was it was bleeding outside of the line. So I didn't want that to happen. So I'm just bringing this color up. And then I am going to switch over to the blender pen and I'm going to use the uh, the firm end and I'm going to pick up uh, whoops, some of that lighter color there. I did get a little dark on there. Hopefully it's not going to affect it too much. And use that to pull my color out. So this way it lets us kind of jump uh, over a couple colors and get um, you know, get some really nice subtle blends. And I can even blend it out to white if I want. Now you have to be careful because the, um, the alcohol blender kind of wants to act as an eraser and push your, um, your pigment around. So sometimes you have to go back in and add a little bit of the lighter color. I kind of want my highlight in the middle of that petal. So then I can go in again with some more of that that medium color and blend it out. Um, I used to just press the tips of the markers together um, to do that, but I find that using the tile is, uh, helps quite a bit. Helps really get a nice a nice blend there. Okay, so there's one petal done. It's nice and blended. We went right out to the white. Uh, I'm gonna replenish my pink on my palette here. 
And um, on this one in back, I want a little bit darker, so I'm actually going to start with my darkest color. And I'm going to go in with that dark. I'm going to quickly take my pink and pick up some dark and go right over that and pull that color out. And this is going to be the most difficult scenario to blend because that's a really, really dark color. And I've jumped several colors lighter, but it's totally doable. Now, something you could do is you could find um, images on the, I mean, I sell digital stamps with flower images if you want to purchase some to use, but um, you can just search for like botanical illustrations. I'll try this with the uh, the fine tip, with the uh, brush tip this time, um, you know, and just print them out and use those as well. I think honestly, scribble off your brush if you're going to recap it. Um, I think I like the firmer, the firmer blending end or a bullet tip, honestly, for this than the brush tip. You know, so if you don't want to, you know, draw it and then worry about ruining your beautiful drawing, you can either photocopy your drawings or you can um, find some images on online that you can color or buy some digital stamps. Now I think that's kind of pretty and look how easy that was. We have that nice sh uh, sheen on the petal. Um, and for the middle here, let's see where we're at. Six minutes, not too bad. I think we can finish this whole, this whole uh, coloring. I'm just going to do that whole center with that dark color. And then, um, for, are we still in? Yep, we're still in frame. I was using the tiles as a palette in um, my kids' class the other day, and we had acrylic paint. I think there was, I stacked a bunch up thinking, I'm going to wash these when I get home, and, uh... I didn't. And so the bottom of this is some paint on it. It keeps sticking to my table. I thought it, I thought it was clean, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, the magical fairies came in and cleaned my, uh, cleaned my palettes when I wasn't looking. Yeah, not really that much chance of that happening. I don't know why I thought that, that would be magically clean. <laughs> I did make sure I wiped off the top with, uh, with rubbing alcohol before I started just to keep it, make sure that was clean. All right. And then I'm going to go over here with a little bit of that dark again under this turned over petal because it would be shaded under there. So you can really control how much color you get when you use a lighter marker to grab the darker marker. And it's not going to ruin your markers because you, um, because it, it comes off the tip first because that's kind of what you put on the tip last. It comes off first and then if you're concerned, give it a little scribble before you put the cap back on for good and you'll be all set. There, and I mean it's such a subtle look. I didn't even use the blender on that one. If I did want to get a little bit more high, get a little highlight out of there, I could simply go in there and it'll push my pigment away and give me a little highlight. See how easy that is? And for this, um, I'm going to start, <clears throat> excuse me, with the uh, darker color here. And there's the furnace, as usual. <laughs> and then I can just grab a little of that lighter color on my blender and just move that in. Look at that. It's just, it really looks like an overturned petal. All right, we'll do uh, one more over here. And uh, I'm going to do the same method. I'm going to start with my medium color. I think I kind of want, I think I want the dark maybe down here in this area. So we'll start over here. You're putting my dark color in. Are we in frame? All right. So, you know, a, a set of Sharpies is not going to set you back as much as uh, a set of, you know, the art markers, and you can really get a lot done with them. And I went through a little bit of that. And you can jump around. Once you get the hang of it, you can jump around a little bit. really want to intensify that color, so I'm adding a little bit more of the dark. Now I can go in with the blender. It's got a little light on it. and really bring it out to white, a white highlight if I want to. But if I decide that's a little too dark, I can go back. If it's not, it's not blending as well or it's too much of a jump, I can go in with a lighter color. And blend back over it with my highlighter. So really, if you, you know, if you really want to get the, you know, try alcohol markers, but you don't feel like it's in your budget, you can always do this technique. Um, here for the buds, I'm actually going to start in with my dark. Because this is such a small area, it should be pretty easy to blend. Take my lighter, my lighter pink, and add the uh, add the dark to it. I 
sometimes you have to go over it a couple times to really get it to move. And then in with my blender, all the way out to kind of nice white. And I can even go for the whole thing if I feel like I've just kind of lost my blend. So, you know, it's it's not difficult and it's something you can do with your supplies. Um, I'll quickly just do this one over here. Just so we can get on with the greens. Because the greens are actually easier to blend. For some reason, the um, your hardest colors to blend are going to be your purples, reds, fuchsias. I think it's just kind of like, you know, the more vivid the color, just like with watercolor, the more it tends to stain. Um, transition that a little bit better all right so now we're gonna do uh, we'll do that and oh when you're done just kind of give your marker a little scribble so if there's any extra ink on there it will come off same thing with your blender and I'm gonna cut that out so I know I'm fine to scribble over there oh I forgot to draw a little leaf there so I'm gonna put that in uh, right here just kind of this kind of sketch it in there all right, and um, you really don't need to prime the paper when you're doing that. And I've got these three greens here, just some standard Sharpie colors. I'm going to go in at the bottom. I'm going to tip my camera up a little bit because I keep wanting to pull that closer to myself here. Um, and just some little circles. I'm going to add a little bit of that dark green, which I already have scribbled out over there. Grab my medium color and pick up a bunch of that green and kind of go right over the edge. And you can see that blends out really well. Those two colors aren't that difficult, different from each other, so they blend really well. And I mean, then this is gonna be more of my challenge. Really pick up a bunch of that green on my marker and I'm going to go over that line. And as I color away, the uh, darker green will be working off of my nib. But look at that. Look at that. A really beautiful, nice, gradiated color. So we want to do the same process over here. And if you go section by section, it's also easier to uh, blend because your color, your marker doesn't have a chance to dry on the, um, on the card. A little lighter with a little bit of that medium color on it. So I mean, the thing, the other really nice advantage of this is like if I'm going to a crop or I'm going to a stamp show or something where um, I want to bring a few supplies to have with me, I'm not going to bring my full set of expensive markers because if I lose them or they get stolen or something, I, you know, I can't afford to replace them. So what I'll do is I'll get, I'll bring these and a blender marker and call it good, you know, make do with what I have. And that way I don't have to be stressed out that I might, you know, lose a marker or get it mixed up with somebody else's. Um, this is just a really great option. And if something does happen to them, you know, well, these markers are not even a dollar a piece. They're, you know, probably like 50 cents less when you buy them in the big kits like that. So you don't have to worry so much. And you don't have to worry about wasting supplies. I have that worry sometimes. I'll be like, well, I gotta save that because it's precious. I don't wanna just waste it on anything. Well, this way, you don't have to worry about wasting it because it's inexpensive and you can easily replenish them at any office supply store or even Walmart or whatever you have, Target. Let me get a little bit of that medium on there. So it's just, it's nice to be able to do that sometimes. All right, so I really just like the way that green blends. What I'm gonna do now is um, use the green marker straight to just color in my stems. Another thing you can do with these markers, um, you can let a color dry, then you can glaze over it with the same color to get a slightly darker uh, shadow. So that's something to do if you don't have very many colors. These techniques will work with whatever markers you have, so you don't have to have <coughs> Copics or Pro Markers or Spectrum Noirs or whatever you know brand that is the you know trendy one at the moment. I have. Lots of markers. I like. I sampled from many different brands. They all work well together, and um, you know, everyone has their favorites. But and actually, I find Bic markets work a little bit better for this than Sharpies. But I know it's easier to, for a lot of you guys to find Sharpies, so I decided I would use these. And I think the water pump's going to start any moment now, so I apologize in advance for that. But I'm almost done here, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And to add a shadow, I'm just picking up some of the darker color on the tip of that marker and dragging it out. I'm going to do that up here as well. Just kind of pull that color around. 
It's so easy. It's so fun. And it looks great. It really does, I think. So there you have it. How to blend inexpensive markers uh, using one blending marker or just using a lighter version of what you already have for Sharpies. There you have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, happy crafting.